focused on rebuilding the billows in the air reservoir. In this section, we're going to move on up to the upper action. The fronts of the reed cells have had some minor repairs where there were small cracks that needed to be filled in. Then the old felt was removed and new felt was fit in. Now we're going to have to rebuild the pallets. These are individual valves under the reed pan. The original pallets had billows cloth put on. This is not a good material to use. Most organs at the time used very fine leather, so the new ones will be using the fine leather. After the old strips of billows cloth were removed, we can see the felt layer below. We're going to replace that too. Notice the very fine glue line. It's not glued all over, just a very fine line down the middle. Okay, so today we are putting the felt on all of these little pallets. The pallets are the valves, and uh, there are 61 of them. They're all little individual pieces of wood. I've got them numbered so they stay in order. Um, first we put down felt, and then we put down leather. Today I'm just putting down the felt. And I made a little fixture to make sure everything was aligned. All the strips are cut out with a rotary cutter on a cutting board to size using uh, one of these pallets as a guide to get it exactly the right width. The, uh, I made a little fixture here that the uh, pallet will fit in and uh, it's got about ten thousandths of an inch clearance there to allow for the felt uh, any fuzzies on the side. What I'm going to do is use that, put the felt inside, put glue on first. There's faint glue lines where the prior glue had been, but I put pencil marks just to make sure. I put the strip of glue on, turn it upside down, and hold it until the glue sets. I'm using hot high glue so it'll set up pretty quick. Then when we take it off, we'll find that everything is nice and perfectly aligned. It's not, um, it's not crooked or anything, and uh, does a good job that way. So, let's go ahead and get this started. There's a piece of felt in there. Here's my hot high glue and a little water bath at 140 degrees. And I put the first pal I put the felt in there, make sure it's lined up on the end. Put the first pallet in, get some glue on a brush, and just paint a thin little stripe down the middle. You don't want the full width of the pallet. The glue will harden the felt just a little bit, and you want the glue to be in an area where the uh, matching hole will be in the soundboard. There, just flip it over now and hold it for a few minutes, or a few seconds actually, um, so that any um, uh, glue that would harden the felt is not out on the perimeter where you want a good seal, so the felt will be nice and mushy. Now, this is a good job because the uh, the glue did not soak all the way through. Notice that on the ends, uh, it, it's not completely glued down all the way because that's where it's going to seal, all the way around the perimeter of the opening. So then we get another felt, put it in the fixture, get it right up to the end, take another pallet, upside down first, get some glue, get some glue on, My glue is getting a little thick. I'm going to have to turn up the temperature just a little bit. Quick flip it over before the glue dries. And that one is done. And I'll do the same thing uh, with the leather. Uh, that will be aligned exactly the same because I'm going to use the same fixture when I apply the leather. The same process is used to attach the leather over the felt. Now all the pallets and the springs can be reinstalled in the proper order. Notice the leather around the frame. The original had felt, which is not a good seal, so we're using leather instead. Also notice the black strips of billows cloth over some of the repaired cracks. Now it's time to clean the reeds. I use a dilute solution of vinegar and water. After about 30 seconds, I rinse them off and use a very fine brush to brush the dirt away Always brush away from the fixed part of the reed toward the loose end, and then I put it on a towel, gently dry it, and use a hair dryer to get the excess water off. Now all of the reeds can be reinstalled, both in the front and the back. Notice that I've made a custom reed puller 
that is ideally suited to fit the end of the reed. With the reeds all in place, we can see if it makes any sound now. Now the mutes are rebuilt and covered with leather. Notice the small overlap of the leather extends beyond the wood. The new mutes are complete for both the front and the back. The swell shutters were also completely rebuilt. New hinges, new felt, new leather. And the mutes are installed. The treble and bass couplers were completely disassembled and completely rebuilt. They look quite different now. The stickers are all cleaned, given a fresh coat of graphite, and new felt discs put on top of the collars where the couplers come in. There were a few that had cracks at the top and chips that had to be repaired. In the next part, we'll move on to the keyboard.